What is going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ecola Espresso and welcome to today's video. Now today, we got a bunch of information for you guys, all jam-packed in one place on Advanced Warfare. If you guys remember, I've done two of these previously, this one being a third installment to the Everything We Know series. However, I haven't done one in over a month. The last one I did was on May 12th, so you can clearly tell that in a month's time, we've got a ton to talk about. So, if you're interested in spending a decent amount of time getting recapped on everything since my last episode, feel free to kick back and and relax. So with that being said, let's get right into it. The first thing of substantial info after my last recap video was a screenshot that showcased the BAL-27. At this time, it was the first real look at one of our weapons that we only got a name of from a previous frame of the reveal trailer. At the time, we knew nothing other than the fact that it was one of our main characters and a potential setting. Was it groundbreaking? No. But was it more than what we had? Absolutely. Next, we had a string of information from Game Informer from their month-long coverage of the game detailing information information on it. The first of which we'll talk about is with audio engineer Don Vecca. In an interview with Game Informer, he confirmed that Sledgehammer had built an entirely brand new audio engine. That being said, it's well overdue. Being developed next gen first, it's a perfect time to upgrade for newer audio, both engine-wise and hardware-wise in consoles. Now with less hardware limitations and more available memory, building a less condensed and better sounding game is very possible. That was one of the biggest things with current gen consoles was the hardware limitations. If you were to compare audio files from trailers and and then compare them to how they sounded actually in game, they were quite different. A lot of people would always ask why the sounds never lived up to the trailer. It's because the audio files are condensed and compressed so that they can fit on current gen hardware. Like I said, next gen first should not have such a problem. Coming out of that interview, we also got a sneak peek at what could be a weapon in advanced warfare, that being the Spaz-12. Whether a futuristic version or just a copy and paste, that's still unknown, but Don Vecca did a comparison of the Spaz-12 from the Modern Warfare 3 version to their iteration of the gun. It was an interesting comparison comparison, but I was more intrigued on what that means for the gun in the game. Moving on, Game Informer then dropped some information on brand new weapons in the game, those being the 3D printing rifle and the plasma energy rifle, which we later know as the M1 Quantum. At this time, this was huge because these were very futuristic ideas compared to what previously has been in the Call of Duty franchise. Granted, the tech is already current and modern things that we can already see in the world. It's crazy stuff for Call of Duty. It's so innovative that a lot of people kept complaining after seeing it. Moving on, the next real information came from a survey that was sent out to a few members of the community. It was from Activision and it was an official survey. Now, screenshots got out from this and the Call of Duty universe went nuts over some of the information that was mentioned in it. This survey focused on what could be some good incentives for pre-ordering the Call of Duty, more specifically Advanced Warfare of what was included was an upgrade to next-gen consoles, beta access to the game, a Nuketown remake, a personalization pack, a bonus map for multiplayer, and or early access for the game. What's even cooler still is that I got a look at another page that a lot of people never even saw, thanks to a subscriber of mine, and I detailed it in the next video that I made, but it was the possibility of zombies in Advanced Warfare. Now, there's a lot to all this that went unanswered. There's multiple ways that it could go. It could just be gauging what people like to see that play the game, it could be a conscious effort to put those ideas and favorites into effect because we all know Sledgehammer is very good at listening to the community, or it could be absolutely nothing. Which one is it? We don't know, and so far, we won't know. Until any of it is confirmed, we'll know nothing of it. The next thing we focused on was a brand new engine for Advanced Warfare. Now, we were told in Ghost that it was a brand new engine. Was it? No. It was a remake of the Infinity Ward engine that we've seen since the very beginning of Call of Duty. That made a lot of people question whether or not Advanced Warfare will actually be made on a brand new engine, and rightfully so. That's a big promise that we've already seen not come through for us. So, from what we're being assured, it's all a brand new engine, and that the game will be drastically different in terms of graphics and mechanics. All very refreshing things to hear, especially as a Call of Duty fan disappointed in the previous title. I later in that video speculated on the rumor that the Crytek engine was licensed out for Advanced Warfare. I've said it multiple times, but I will say it again, that would be huge for the game. The Crytek engine is much more capable and better suited to deliver stunning graphics and gameplay than the Infinity Ward Quake engine. That engine is outdated and suited for current gen consoles, and the Crytek engine is much better fitting going into next gen. Following this, we had a ton of stuff because it was everyone's favorite time of year, E3. We got our first real look at some stunning gameplay from the mechanics to the tech to everything in between. I was personally blown away at what we saw with the E3 gameplay reveal. From the reveal, I followed up with numerous videos regarding what we saw, including weapons and mechanics and things of the like, so let's go over them a little bit. 
it. Firstly, our weapons. We had a ton of guns shown to us. The 3D printing rifle, the M1 Quantum, as well as we got new names of guns from closed doors behind the scenes footage. Those being the ASM-1, the AMR-9, the BAL-27, and the UTS-19. That made our list of weapons 7 with the Sonic Shotgun, M1 Quantum, the 3D printing rifle, and what appeared to be a brand new LMG that I reported on previously. So our arsenal is getting bigger, and speaking of which, the Advanced Arsenal is a pre-order bonus, not specific to any one retailer, just pre-ordering the game in general. What you get with it is the M1 Quantum and an exosuit that are golden, a cool little added touch. But back to the concept, mechanic-wise, we're getting a few cool things coming out of all this. Sliding is reported to be returning into the game, which is something that I personally enjoy. It's more practical over dolphin diving, as well as we get two new cool takedown mechanics, one where you punch an enemy and it knocks them 20 feet back, as well as one where you boost jump over them and then you punch downward called the Exo Slam. Perhaps mechanics that could be commonplace and possibly even replace melees, who knows? And now the latest of the information that we have here for Advanced Warfare is the fact that we got our first multiplayer image two days ago when former Optic Pro Big Timer tweeted out, thanks to at Sledgehammer Games for giving me a chance to check out Advanced Warfare this weekend, hype for November, to which Michael Condra replied, thanks for stopping by at Sledgehammer Games to check out Advanced Warfare. Plus, not a bad showing for a rookie, to which he attached the following image, which as I went over in my video yesterday, is a leaderboard for in-game lobbies. Now also with that is the fact that Capture the Flag will be returning. So is it anything massive? Kind of, but kind of not, because we do have our first image from multiplayer and one of the game modes confirmed, which is absolutely awesome, but does it show off any gameplay or anything of the like? No. So that's really a toss-up for what you guys want to think of it. I really personally think it's awesome. But that brings us to today in terms of news. I know more videos have been made on my end, such as the return of videos, which realistically, in essence, are a wish list of mine, which I could end up revising and making one really long video, but I don't know if I'll end up doing that. But in terms of news, that's where we're at at the moment in the Call of Duty world. Since there's not really anything that I can ask you what you guys think about all this, what is your favorite piece of news that we've gotten since my last recap video? My personal favorite was the E3 gameplay, but I want to hear what you guys have to say down in the comment section down below. That's been my time, ladies and gentlemen. If you did like the video, please leave a like ring down below. Any shares to your Facebook, Twitter, and or MySpace if you OG like that. Always greatly appreciated. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe for the best of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare content. Any new news information, you guys know exactly where to find it right here up on my channel. Thank you guys once again so much for watching. My name is Nicole Espresso. As always, if you guys are having a great day, I shall see you guys tomorrow. Take care and peace. Surprise, motherfucker.